Hello ladies and gentlemen, today I'd like to make a little video showing you how you can put RetroPie onto your Raspberry Pi easily. Now this is going to be the noobish way, the easiest way, uh, the most straightforward way, and if you're a tech guy this will be right up your alley. Now the first thing we have to do is we have to download the image. Now to do that we have to go to retropie.org.uk slash download and figure out exactly which version you have. I have the Raspberry Pi 2, so we're going to see it zipping right up here, or we're downloading a zip version. Once that finally downloads, we're going to have to extract that. Now the next step after extracting is to choose a suitable SD card. You're going to want, I shouldn't say SD card, sorry, uh, a suitable uh, micro SD card. Now you're going to want to make sure you get uh, a fast one. The faster the better, of course. Now you generally want a fast micro SD card, no matter what you're doing. But in this case specifically, if you have a slow micro SD card, it's going to slow everything down. And the way that you can figure that out, on every SD card, you know, say, name, something, 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 and then on the corner, you will see a number usually an expensive one will have a 10 and a circle in it. You can find these from 1 to 10. 1 is the slowest. 10 is fast. But right now the very best that you can get will have whoops, will have a 1 within a U. The 1 within a U is what you want faster the better and that's fastest now the first thing we need to do is plug the micro SD card into your computer and format that sucker you want to use the SD formatter from uh, the official website and you just want to do this to make sure that your uh, SD card is formatted to the best of any ability this program is free I'll have the link in the description just make sure it's pointed at the right thing and nuke it. Okay, okay. All right, she's formatted. The next step is to mount. So here we have a Win32 disk imager. I'll make sure to put the link in the description. What we have to do is we have to locate the image file. I put that on the desktop. Now this is the image file that we just downloaded, RetroPie 3.7. I'm going to select right. So the first time that you plug in your SD card and uh, run Re RetroPie, it's going to be a little bit longer than every other time. It's got a little bit of mounting to do. It's got a little bit of setup. You should get right into it. It's in a little bit of time. So once you get to this screen, say your controller, I prefer my Xbox remote, just press and hold a button and it'll see it. Now you have to go through and map every button on the, the control pad. Up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, the top. So this is RetroPie. As soon as you start it up. Right now there's nothing on here. Well, I shouldn't say there's nothing on here. Right now there are a few interesting things on here. Duke Nukem 3D, Doom, all very cool stuff. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here, but the idea that I'm playing Doom here, the idea that I'm playing Doom Come here. 
There we go. The idea that I'm playing this on a retro Pi is freaking awesome. Right now, I am just using the old school directional pad. But still, lots of fun. Press start and select together in order to get to the main page. Now, some things we really should do here is we should get this sucker started up. Raspberry config. You want to expand the memory so that the memory card is using, or sorry, so that uh, the Raspberry Pi is using all the memory card. So expand file system. In here, when you're on what you want, you have to press right and then hit select. And away you go. It's now using the full memory card. And the next thing you want to do is you want to overclock. Overclock uh, to the high settings. Set to high. Finish. Oh, you gotta reboot in order to get all this working. So here you can see that I've added some Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. In order to move games, <coughs> sorry, in order to move ROMs to the memory card, what you have to do is go to a Windows 7 system and go to network or on a Windows 10 system you have to actually put in the IP address. You have to figure out the IP address and put that in to the Explorer and use that. But if you have Windows 7 again just go to network RetroPie will show up and then you paste your ROMs into the folders inside there. You'll go into Raspberry Pi it'll say N64 or NES you just drop them there it'll automatically pick them up. Unfortunately, you cannot load games into this SD card by plugging your SD card into the computer. Uh, there's no location for that, or at least I haven't found it yet. These games pretty much feel exactly like they were before. The Nintendo and Super Nintendo ROMs work very nicely. I'm pulling off uh, the regular attacks that I'm totally used to here in Super Street Fighter 2. Feels just like it did on the Super Nintendo. So you notice pretty quickly with the N64 games that they just don't run quite as nicely as everything that preceded them. Even on Raspberry Pi 3, it just doesn't run beautifully. I think they have to improve the emulator. I'm not sure it's the hardware, I think it's the emulator. But the people making these emulators don't exactly get paid a whole lot of money, so we just got to appreciate what we do have. This is choppy. The price is right. Anyways, that's how you get RetroPie going on one of these systems. Very good. Very awesome. Everything but Nintendo 64 games are good. Some Nintendo 64 games work just fine. No problem. Shadows of the Empire definitely isn't one of them. But, hey, you can't, can't complain about the price, right? Anyways, hope you liked it. Hope you learned something. Have fun, YouTube.